Okay. Push that down. Right there, and then go back up. Oh, it's on the... Change the... Oh, switch the camera. No, it's fine. Is that... Got me? Yeah. Do you want to see it yourself? Still the same. That's why I need the side. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Bang on. That, uh, that, that. as we are talking about the hyperburst, but we've done one better. We've got the real Kalpish Patel, so put your hands together. Thank you. All right, welcome ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for being here. Before we start, a couple of uh, things I want to just make sure that everyone's on the, uh, you know, got their mind in the right place. If you drove here, you've got to make sure your car was registered at reception, otherwise you're going to get billed. So if you came here by car and parked on any of the slots here, make sure that your registration plate is in the, uh, the thing at the desk. Cool? All done? Yeah. Well done, I love it. All organised. Next thing is, be present. Be present and be here, right? Life is full of distractions, we know that. So if you're brave enough, switch your phone off. And if that's too much to ask, put it on silent. All right? Put your phones on silent so they don't disturb you, and more importantly, they don't disturb people that are paying attention. Cool? And then pay attention, of course. Paying attention is one of the biggest skills you'll learn in life. All right? Our minds are on 24 hours a day, seven days a week, right? Even when we sleep, our mind doesn't sleep. It's always up to something. Are you with me? Solving your problems, solving your challenges, giving you solutions if you're awake enough, create more problems if you're not awake enough, etc., etc. It's always up to stuff. So far, so good? Yeah. Part of the training today is learning to be present. Here's a couple of tips on how to get present. Right? Whenever you feel your mind is distracted, here's a sign. If you find yourself sitting there, because I'm never boring, just so you know. <laughs> so if you're sitting there going, chances are your brain's got a hold of you. Make sense? So you've got to get hold of your brain and wake it up. Here's a couple of things you can do to not go like that halfway through the training process. You can take a deep breath. Oxygen keeps us awake. It's amazing. So everyone practice with me. Big deep breath in. And release. Who feels better just for doing that? The human body doesn't lie. Isn't that cool? It will always tell you what's good for it and what isn't. All right? So it always works. Deep breath always brings you present. That's why whenever you go to any meditations or any of those kind of retreat places, they focus on the breath a lot. Because your breath brings you to now. The breath only exists where? Here and now. You can't breathe in advance. <laughs> and if you didn't take a few extra breaths yesterday, that, one, that opportunity's gone. <laughs> all right? So the only time you can grab some of this free energy, prana, the most powerful energy on the planet. The only time you can grab that is when? Right now. So grab it. It doesn't cost a penny. Yet. Remember when water was free? It's a matter of time, man. It's a matter of time. We'll be paying for this stuff as well. So take advantage of all of the, the power that is already in your immediate environment through breath. Secondly, stay hydrated. What is it? Yeah. A lot of the time, the reason you're sloping off, the reason you're feeling tired or you know, kind of... Uh, Water, all right? Stay hydrated. Not alcohol, that's a dehydrant. Not coffee or tea, that's a dehydrant. What is it? Water, Water is the power, all right? Water for staying awake. If you want to go to sleep, drink coffee and tea. They'll tell you it'll keep you awake. I've never stayed awake because I drank coffee. But no, water will give you life, all right? It's very, very simple, this stuff, right? And the other thing is move. The closest sign... So you falling asleep or feeling tired and stuff is that you're moving towards death. You with me? When you're dead, you're not moving. 
When you're doing this, you're not moving. Try doing this while you're moving. You can't. The two don't act hand in hand. Does that make sense? So if you feel it happening, just move. Move your feet, move your fingers and toes, and jiggle your knees about. Give yourself a bit of a... Get the blood circulating and get some movement going. Does that make sense? What are the three things you can do to be present? Breathe. Easy, right? Imagine you spend the rest of your life awake and present. Would that be cool? Now, how many of you practice this? I don't know. That's going to be in your hands. But I've given you the science behind it. Isn't that... Who's already learned more than you expected to learn in the first five minutes? Give, us, give, you, <laughs> give you a round of applause. Come on. All right, so what brings us here together today? Not being present on my phone. <laughs> was that a phone call? Yes, it was a 97... Yeah, this, this is my Dubai number. Nobody ever called me. I've been here a week. Nobody's called me. <laughs> and they decide to call me when I'm doing this. I love it. Isn't, isn't life really brilliant? <laughs> What brings us here together? Each and every one of us is here because we have one common thread between us. We left our homes this morning or last night to come together for one common thread experience. And that is that we want to improve our lives. Isn't that cool? Yes. Do you know how many people on the planet actually are committed to improving their lives? A very small percentage. Minute, in fact. Most people spend their entire lives in a slumber. Life passes by and they drop dead at the end of it and they wonder what happened. Isn't that true? Yes. Who knows people that spend their whole life in a slumber not waking up? Who knows people like that? That's why I love these kind of environments. Because this is, if you're present, this is the gift. That you're sat next to somebody, somebody in front of you, somebody behind you, is up to the same stuff as you. They're up for a better experience of life. They're up for improving their life. They're up for producing more than they need. What a concept. Producing more than you need. Here's what happens. When you produce more than you need, it means that you can now help others. You cannot help anyone until you produce more than you need. Is that making sense? Yeah. When you're on an airplane, they tell you, before we crash, if we do, make sure you put your oxygen mask on first, before trying to save your child. What a statement. Are you kidding me? Thank you. I don't know any mother or father that would think that way. But guess what? If you thought from a practical, logical perspective, it tells you everything, doesn't it? You can't save anyone until you can. Wow. Whether it's physically, emotionally, spiritually, financially, whatever area of life you want to master... You cannot offer it to others until you offer it to yourself. Isn't that cool? Does anyone here know coaches that struggle? Who knows coaches that struggle? Come on, be honest. Yeah? It's because they haven't worked on it themselves. Too many people read something in a book and are too quick to teach it to others without applying it to themselves. And then they wonder why they don't have clients. Hello? Are you with me? Yeah. See, if you read something and apply it and transform your life, and now you speak, people want to listen. But if you read something and you want to teach it, now they're looking and saying, well, why haven't you done that? You're talking a good talk. Why does your life suck? Make sense? So if we really want to make a difference, get committed to making a difference to your own life. Start there, right? Start with your own life. Be a better version of yourself today than you were yesterday. Progress doesn't happen in a sudden moment. It can, but those moments are rare. But progress 100% happens if you make it happen daily. You with me? A little bit every day. Small improvement daily. Wake up one minute earlier tomorrow, two minutes earlier the day after, three minutes earlier the day after that. Guess what? It won't be long before you're not oversleeping. What does oversleeping mean? It means sleeping more than you can afford to sleep. People don't normally think of it like that. Sleeping more than you can afford to sleep. If you're barely making ends meet and you're grabbing eight or nine hours a night, you can't afford to sleep. What am I saying? You need to learn to wake up a little bit earlier. Is that making sense? You need to learn to stay awake a little bit later. Just a little bit. If you try and do too much too soon, you'll give up. 
because the body will go into shock and you'll go, my, that was horrible, I don't want to do that again. But if you do it a little bit at a time, that's how progress is made. Same with finances. If you haven't saved anything for 10 years, save a little bit tomorrow. One less coffee a day, bang. Fiber a day, 1500 a month, banked. Doesn't sound like a lot, does it? Oh, I might as well just keep drinking the coffee then. 1500 is not going to make a difference. But guess what? It's not about the 1500. What you've done is you've grabbed the control of a situation. It's the habit. Because if you save the fiber on the coffee, you'll save another couple of quid on crisps and chocolates. Another couple of quid on biscuits. Is this making sense? That are all unnecessary, by the way. This beautiful vehicle needs very little to maintain itself. Overindulgence is a massive, massive downfall of the masses. Are you with me? When you actually get present, oxygen, water, movement, and a little bit of nutrition, you're good to go. I'm not saying become hermits, right? I'm saying enjoy the good things of life. But know where you are and commit to progress. Are you with me? Know where you are and commit to progress. That's all I'm saying. Make your version of improvements slowly, small improvements as you go along. Create more time, create more money, create more energy, create better relationships. Is this making sense? Relationships don't improve overnight. You can't mistreat your partner for 10 years, take them out on Valentine's Day and think everything's okay. Which is how most people do life, by the now way. You tell me. <laughs> now you tell me. <laughs> Here's a bunch of flowers, box of chocolates, take you out from me, or everything's going to be alright now, isn't it? That's what we call a bullshit relationship. Are you with me? Because if you treat them shit the day before, and you treat them shit the day after, then you're a shit. <laughs> Make sense? A little bit every day. Got a friend of mine whose wife complained that she didn't take him out for a certain celebration of the year. I'm like, yeah, but do you treat her right the rest of the year? Get to focus on that, right? Sometimes the recipient is also focusing on the wrong stuff, right? If you've got a partner that treats you well, don't worry about the small stuff. Don't sweat the small stuff. Mm. They forgot your birthday card, your anniversary card. That's bullshit as well. <laughs> Make sense? Would you rather have that anniversary card and a shit relationship? Or a brilliant relationship and no anniversary card? Do you see what I'm saying? Start making the better choices, right? So how do you show up? That's what we're going to work on today. How do you show up better for yourself? What can you do for you so that you can now serve others better? For me, that's the best life you can live. My belief, and it's just my belief, right? And you can buy into it if you want to, and you can throw it in the bin if you want to. That's how everything works here today, by the way. Not everything I say is, oh my God, phenomenal, did he just say that? <laughs> It is actually, but anyway. <laughs> not everything I say is the truth, right? It's only my truth. So your job is not to believe me, it's to check for yourself. If it resonates, if it, make, if it makes a better person of you, buy into it. If it doesn't, bin it. Is that cool? So I'm just going to throw ideas. I'm just going like, to let, let ideas flow, and then you can see where you are in your journey, and what, what ideas that you hear today can improve your experience of your life. <coughs> so far, so good? Who's ready to improve their lives? Yeah. Give yourselves a round of applause. Yeah. Oh, get serious. <laughs> Let's all get undressed. <laughs> <laughs> Not okay. my, my seminar's a bit different. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so, the other thing is, I said be present, right? What does that mean? It means that you get the most out of this moment for you. All right? Get the most out of this moment for you. So that ties into take whatever here works for you, right? And my commitment to you is that you leave here today, today, not tomorrow or next week. You leave here today a better person than the one that walked in earlier today. Is that cool? Yes. You can have the same commitment to you as well. That's your choice. You can have a commitment to be the same. Nothing. Nobody can force you to change here today. So you're safe. Some of you might be shitting yourself thinking, what's he going to do to us? All right? Now, you can stay exactly the same as you were before you came if you want to. We have an opportunity to upgrade your thinking, upgrade your experience of life. Cool? So I'm going to start by sharing my story a little bit, just so that you can, number one, get to know a little bit about me. But also, my story actually is everybody's story in one way, shape, or form. So you will learn stuff from my story about your story. Is that cool? So learn to map people's experiences and stories into your life 
And all of a sudden you might see moments where you could have made different decisions, taken different actions to produce better results or different results. So far so good? So my story starts, and it should do because I'm me, before I was born. It starts with my grandparents. My grandparents, now listen to this, I love my grandparents, right? My great grandparents who I never met, I love them even more. Because they produce my grandparents. I don't know if you've got an appreciation for your heritage, but I have for mine. You can start there. You are here because somebody up there made a decision to get jiggy with it. (laughs) (laughs) So I'm grateful for my great grandparents, my grandparents and my parents, right? If it wasn't for all of that stuff that they had to go through and do and be and have and all of that stuff, I wouldn't be here. So gratitude for me is the foundation pillar of everything. It's an overused word, an under-experienced word. Most people are not in gratitude of life before they were born. I am. Got it? When you can be in that level of gratitude, then life, you get that this life right now is nothing. It's not even a blip in a, a blip. It's not even a dot in a dot. Do you get that? Your life is so meaningless that the drama you put into it is a nonsense. Do you get this? When you get how meaningless your life is, as a life, now you can create something different. Now you can add some meaning into your life. Is that cool? Because when you're dead, your children might remember you for a few years, and their children might remember you for a few years, but the next generation after that will only talk about you once in a blue moon. For, most part, for the most part. Is that making sense? And a couple of generations further down, boom. You came, you went, and nobody even knows about it. Nobody even knew that you existed. So what seems really important to us, in the grand scheme of the universe, and the world, and everything that's going on, unless you do something about it. Got it? So what lasts, is the stuff you do something about. So what stays once you're dead? Maybe some... Lives that you made. Are you with me? Maybe a book that you wrote. Maybe a journal that you kept. Now you start thinking a little bit past just survival. Is that making sense? Some of the best books written are people's stories. Would you agree with that? People sharing their stories, right? So you could do that, whether it's in video format or written format, whatever, but start sharing. Sharing is how you start living in others. How? Sharing. Most people share very little. We close ourselves down, lock ourselves up in our home, bury ourselves into a television, and survive another day. Make sense? Sharing. Just meet with people. Say hi. How are you today? What are you up to? That one little thing alone, you now exist in somebody else's world. Is this making sense? Mm -hmm. Little things that make a big difference. People say, one day when it's like this, then I'll do this. It's not not how it works. It's the little stuff. It's not about Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, Father's Day. It's about the days in between. Celebrate those days. If you do remember, congratulations. Have fun and celebrate. I'm not saying don't celebrate, but I'm saying it's more important to be that message than to just celebrate the message. Are you with me? So all of us here, (coughs) definitely, I don't know if you want to improve your health and your well-being and your spiritual awareness and your relationships, that I don't know. But one thing I know for a fact, every single one of you are here because you definitely want to have an impact on your financial life. Is that true? Yes. All right. That's the common thread that I'm talking about. All of us want a little bit more of this in our life experience. Correct? Yes. But it's not about this. It's what can this do for you? Are you with me? Because what it will do for me is very different to what it will do for Vinny. Or what it will do for Jen. Does that make sense? So what is it that you really want? Nobody wants a million pounds. For what? Statistically, and it's a bit of a mad one, 90% of lottery winners are broke within seven years of winning millions. If it was about the money, they should never have had to work for the rest of their life. 
It's making sense. Who here has made a good chunk of money at some point in their life and blown it? Come on. We're all guilty of it. Right? Yeah, we've all done it, right? I had, to, I had to go through this to learn it, to understand what the hell, how can you make millions and have nothing? There are people out there that don't make a million in a lifetime and have nothing. That I understand. But when you make millions and have nothing, that's another equation altogether. But that doesn't add up in my maths book. How can you make a fortune and have nothing? Weird, right? Because you will only ever grow as far as your mind grows. Even financially. If your mind hasn't made it, the bank balance won't hang around for long. You've got to make it here first before you can make it stay anywhere else. Is this making sense? You've got to make it in here first before you can make it anywhere else. So my grandparents left India to come to Africa to build railways for the British Raj. That's a weird word, isn't it? The British Raj. What? <laughs> Doesn't get more weird than that, does it? <laughs> for the British Empire. Are you with me? Yeah. So the British Empire, bless their souls, <laughs> went around the world with guns and cannons and convinced people that they were great! Britain. It's a tiny little island. It's about the no internet, right? A tiny little blob in the middle of the sea that nobody even notices until you expand the map. Does it make any sense? But in the eyes and ears of the world was this great Britain. Does this make any sense? And they went out and wiped out gazillions of people, murdered tons of people, and took over countries. Making sense? And then they convinced people that they knew better. And they start putting all of their systems in place and creating their stuff, right? And in this little journey of theirs, they offered people. So in the, in the beginning, it was more like, you're coming with me, get on the boat, we're going to kidnap you, slavery. But then it evolved a little bit. Now they said, do you want to come with me? We'll pay you a little bit more money than you earn over here. And then you can come build railways over there. Does that make any sense? My grandparents, because they were progressive, because they had a vision, because they had determination, were willing to leave their wives and children at home, jump on a boat to cross waters, to get to a land that they'd never been to, and many boats didn't even make the journey. We're talking about different times here, guys, right? Yeah. We can't take for granted, like we do today, that we jump on the plane and lands on the other side. They did not know that the ship would get there or not back then. We've lost family members to those ships. Are you with me? My grandparents luckily made it. But the point is, they were willing to sacrifice something to have something better going forward. That's a mindset. They weren't forced out. There was no war. There was no famine. There was no danger. They weren't fleeing and running away. They chose to leave everything they know to start afresh. Some people couldn't even get from their homes to the event today because the half an hour drive was too far. <laughs> Can you see the mindset? How far are you willing to go to make your life better? Some of you want to be writing this stuff down. I know I'm beautiful and really nice to look at aesthetically, but your notes are really going to come invaluable after this event, right? Make sure you grab this stuff so that you can refer back to it going forward in your life. Of course, we've got the live, so you can always watch it later and catch up on Facebook, right? So the mindset is the second most important thing after gratitude, right? Working on the mindset. You don't succeed because you joined a company. I've never seen anyone succeed because they joined a company. Make sense? You succeed before you join the company. It's a mindset. It's an attitude. Have you shown to yourself that you have that mindset or attitude? A go-getter. Something's got to happen. I've got to be up to something. And it shows up in your life. It shows up in your life everywhere, right? The fact that you're here is a demonstration. Massive tick box, right? Like I said, many couldn't be bothered to make it. You with me? The fact that you're here, but it's not just about this event. Do you show up on Zooms? Do you show up on the phone calls? Do you have one-to-one -one meetings? Do you meet people for coffees and lunches and 
dinner isn't. Are you out there? Is this making sense? Or are you locking yourself indoors? Away from all of that. Away from the world. The signs are there, right? So look at your life and see what are the things that you do that demonstrate. Not in here. Everyone thinks a good talk. If you ask anyone on any planet, anywhere in the universe, do you want to improve your life? The answer is always going to be yes. 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 Doesn't matter what you want. Life doesn't care what you want. It cares what you're willing to put in to get. You with me? Or another way, life gives you what you deserve. Not what you want or what you need. Life doesn't care what you need and what you want. Have you learned that in your life? Have you had that experience a couple of times? I really need this. Life doesn't give a shit. I need this to work. Okay. Oh. <laughs> I really want this to happen. Good luck with that. It's not a strategy. Is that making sense? The strategy happens in the doing. What are you doing about that now? Everyone can have the dream, very few act upon it. You with me? My grandparents acted upon their dream to improve their lives for their wives and their children and their future children. They left to a country that they didn't know, a country with a language was foreign to them. They had no idea what to expect. They had no family or friends brand new pastures, and they worked. They worked in the sun, doing whatever they had to do to put railways into Africa. And at some point, they called their wives over. That's called progress. They called their children over. That's called progress. What is it called? Progress. Wow. <laughs> when you land in another country, do you think they want you there? No. We'll say that. <laughs> Coming over here. <laughs> 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 Eating my food, <laughs> taking my job. <laughs> Mate, if you wanted the job in the first place, they wouldn't have one to take, would they? Mm -hmm. Make sense? The jobs they did were the shit jobs. The unskilled labour jobs that, they, that, that the people locally didn't want to do, right? It's making sense. It's an attitude thing. Anyone can succeed with the right mindset. Can you see that? They brought their families to a new country, new beginnings, new start. Wow. For me, it's mind-boggling. Mind-boggling. That they did that. This was before the internet, right? <laughs> like when they landed in Africa, they couldn't just phone their wives, Hey, hey honey, I made it. My boat made it. We're good. <laughs> It's like a two, three month journey, right? Mm. And the only way to communicate then was to send a letter back on the boat going back. It's another three months. So the wife didn't even know if their husbands were alive for six months. Would you pay that price? Some of you panic when your husband disappears for a night. That becomes a drama, right? Six months, no communication. Not even knowing if they made it. That's what you call taking chances. What is it called? Taking Some of you don't take chances. Some of you want to... Don't, don't go home for a couple of days. See what happens. No, I'm just kidding. Don't. <laughs> There's a reason I didn't get married. <laughs> you with me, though? Some of you don't take... You're too scared to take chances. Write this down. Take more chances. Success tips. Take more chances. Take a risk. Nothing changes until you take a risk. You have to learn to take risks. Guess who takes risk? Successful people. Write that down. Underline it, bold it, capital it, box it, whatever you've got to do. Successful people take risks. Everybody else retires broke. And write that down and take it to the grave with you. Or you can write it down and do something with it. That's your choice, right? Successful people take risks. We've got to learn from successful people. My grandparents were super successful. The fact that they jumped on a boat, didn't know they'd get to the other side, and they got to the other side. That's success. That's solid DNA I come from. Is that making sense? That's why I'm so proud. How can I ever fail when that's my DNA? Can you see? Wow, I love that.
We've inherited so much in advance of being born. That's why my story is so important, right? Because if you can learn a little bit about your story from my story, you might appreciate that you're here today. You being here today in itself is success, right? But you don't relate to yourself that way, do you, oftentimes? You spend more time beating yourself up, giving yourself a hard time, winding yourself up, rather than saying, hold on a second, I'm here. God damn it. I made it. This far. You made it. This far. To Croydon. <laughs> you made it this far in your life, right? Guess what you're made of? Good stuff. We always win. We just don't trust ourselves to win often enough. Write this down. We always win. How do we know that? You're still here. Who's had really tough times and thought, I'm never going to get through this? Who's ever experienced that, right? And guess what? Evidence overwhelmingly suggests that you always win. So why do the drama of, I'm never going to get through this, this is really difficult, oh my God, oh my God, oh my... Why do all of that? Drop it. And put all of your energy into winning. Can you see how easy it gets? If you just get solution conscious and focusing on the winning rather than the current experience, take yourself out of that current experience scenario and manifest a better outcome in everything that you do. Any part of your life that you're struggling in, you can win it. So write down a couple of things that currently in your life are the most challenging things for you. And if you're sat next to your partner, make sure they're not looking. <laughs> Write down a couple of the things that you're really challenged with in your life. And know this, that you've got everything inside of you to solve that stuff. Like that, if you're committed to solving it. Like that. There's nothing there to solve other than the nonsense that you're telling yourself in here. Is this making sense? Stop talking nonsense to yourself and commit to improving whatever you need to improve. Guess what happened next? My dad was born in Kenya. That's right, my granddad and grandmother got jiggy with it in Kenya. <laughs> and then my other granddad and grandmother got jiggy with it in Tanzania. And my mum was born. Bless her, there she is over there, look. That lady there in the green sari. My favourite person in the world. And if it wasn't for mum getting jiggy with dad, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> I don't want to hear that, I don't want to hear that. It's too late. You're already here. That stuff happened. Are you with me? Yeah. Isn't that magical? Mum and dad were born and raised in Africa, speaking Swahili as their first language. And Gujarati as their second language because we never forget our roots. Make sense? Spent their whole life in Africa. They met each other, got married, and they got jiggy with it and had me. And then they brought me to England. Three generations in three different continents. Wow. You can't tell me that I can't win. <laughs> you cannot tell me I can't win. It's not possible. Here's why it's not possible for you to tell me that I can't win. Number one, out of the trillions of sperm that tried to get born, I got here. <laughs> <laughs> The fact that you're here, you've already won, but you're just not present to it. Are you with me? The fact that you got to earth is a trillions to one odds chance, and you made it. You've already won. You've won for 60, 70, 80 years. You won that window of opportunity to come and experience your spirit through a body on planet earth for a little while. Is that cool? You already won that ticket. You applied, and boom, your number came up. You met the right egg, and turned up here. <laughs> like what are the chances right and then mum and dad work their tail off and become self-employed and have a phenomenally successful business in Africa so when your parents are successful as entrepreneurs having not had jobs or work for other people that takes something who here has never had a job their whole life and produced your own for yourself who's spent their whole life doing that 
Never had a job. One, two, three, four. Now, do you see what I'm saying? Like four or five percent of the planet. I can't not win. I'm born to good stuff. Is that making sense? But here's the good news. My great-grandparents didn't do anything different to the rest of the planet. My grandparents moved. Is that making sense? So they changed something. They changed a pattern of behavior. We don't come from success. My grandparents were unskilled laborers in Africa. Is this making sense? But then my parents made it. So my grandparents made a decision to move. My parents made a decision to be entrepreneurs and not be tied into a system that restricted their growth. Is this making sense? Hello? Yes. Yes. It better be making sense to you, right? It makes sense to me already. I'm hoping it makes sense to you, right? This is for you guys. Start looking at, are you going to be that person? Or has somebody above already been that person for you? Start latching on to all of the evidence you have in your life already, or be the person that creates the evidence for the next generation. But somebody, somewhere, has got to decide before anything changes. Somebody, somewhere, has got to decide. Write this down. Decisions determine everything. Our decisions determine everything. When, sh when, when is the best time to make a decision? No. Right now. So let's make some decisions, right? You wrote down some challenges. Who here commits to solving those challenges as quickly as possible and getting rid of that nonsense in your life? Show me if you're committed to it. Congratulations. Give yourself a round of applause. <laughs> so once you make the decision to solve something, guess what? It's solved. It's solved here first. You get it? Then you just got to find your way. The way can be different for everybody, right? But once you, you solve it here first, you get committed, you make the decision, and then you follow through on the decision. All right? This is really important. Write this down. Follow through on the decision. It's really important. How many of us have made decisions in our life and didn't follow through on them, right? We know where that ends up. You with me? How does it go on New Year's Eve? Here's the seat. I'll paint it for you, right? <laughs> Pour the champagne. We're with our friends, hugging and kissing, looking at the clock like everything's going to change at that exact midnight. Like it's delusional, isn't it? We're sitting there watching, waiting. Ten, nine, eight. Like, what the hell? Nothing's going to happen. It's going to go. The time's going to go. One second past. Two seconds past. Three. Nothing changed. Right? Nothing actually changed. Oh, it was an excuse to have a glass of champagne. Fair enough. But in that process, something really, really ludicrous happens. We say things like, this is the year. <laughs> Who's been guilty? Come on. Who's been guilty? <laughs> this is the year. <clears throat> Guess what's worse than New Year's Eve saying this is the year? Guess what's worse than that? Three months before, I'll start in the new year. <laughs> Let's get Christmas out the way. <laughs> Let's get the kids back to school. Then we'll start. When the kids finish schooling, when they're 18, then we'll start. <laughs> Who knows what I'm talking about? It's a nonsense. What is it? Nonsense. Write this down. We are the best excuse manufacturers on the planet. <laughs> we are the best excuse manufacturers on the planet, right? Dime a dozen. So get really good at spotting when you're making excuses. Because nothing changes until you override your excuses. Your excuses will keep you exactly where you are. That's their job. So write some of your excuses down. What are the things that you identify with, right? I don't have time. I can't afford it. I'm in the wrong country. I'm in the wrong postcode. Nobody loves me. Nobody listens to me. Nobody cares. 
What are your excuses? Write them down. I don't know enough people. I'm not very good at communicating. I'm not very confident. I'm very shy. Whatever bullshit you've been telling yourself, write it down. Because until you identify it, you can't do anything about it. Nothing changes until you decide and follow through on changing it. Make sense? Write your excuse down. It only keeps you where you are. That's the only thing excuses do, is they make you feel comfortable about where you are. That's all they do. <coughs> they give that forced sense of comfort. Make sense? Once you identify these little moments that pop up in your brain, the next time an excuse pops up, you now have a choice. You either follow through on the excuse or you follow through on your decision. Life's that simple. You either follow through on your excuse or you follow through on your decision. What if life was that easy? If life was that easy, who would take that path? We'll get there, that five of us. It's always the same five, right? They're already successful minded. By the end of this seminar, we'll get everyone on side with that. All right? If life was as simple as that, like if you wanted to succeed in your well-being, it's a decision to follow through. If you wanted to succeed in your financial abundance, it's a decision to follow through. If you wanted to succeed in a relationship, it's a decision to follow through. If life was as simple as that, would you not want to live your life on those terms? Let's try again. We've got the muscular power. I know you can do this. You've lifted your arm before. Show me by a show of hands if you'd like to make life easier for yourself. Show me. Boom. Congratulations. Some of you are still like that. <laughs> Heavy. <laughs> yeah. You used to raise in the virtual world. Yeah, exactly. It's the beer, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and listen, body language is everything, by the way, right? Your body language tells me where you're at in relationship to yourself. That's a bit heavy, I know. <laughs> your body language tells me where you are in relationship to yourself. Make sense? You can tell me with words how amazing and wonderful and powerful and productive and effective and blah, blah, blah that you are. But I can tell within a couple of minutes of looking you up and down whether you're talking shit or you mean business. Make sense? Yeah. The bulk of our communication is expressed through our nervous system. So all that happens in movement. So when you go, yeah. I know that you only did that because the person next to you raised their hand. <laughs> Peer pressure had you raise your hand, right? There was no decision in that. There was no commitment. This is a, oh shit, I don't know what <laughs> <laughs> You with me? Stop following others. write this stuff down, right? Stop following others. Stop responding to peer pressure and all that nonsense. Peer pressure will keep you broke. They'll demand that you know what happened on EastEnders last time. If you don't know, then they're going to look down on you. Are you with me? You missed the episode? How could you? All of that, right? What do you mean you don't know what the score is from the football match? Because I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Somebody got it. <laughs> Some of you are fucked off because I said fuck. Yes, you're right. You're right. Can you see? You get triggered, right? <laughs> Imagine a human being is so powerful and yet a word can throw them completely off balance. A word. A word can throw us completely off balance. Can you see that? Now don't fucking swear a lot. <laughs> but I do when I'm making a point. I love listening to you, Chris. <laughs> right? I love listening to you, sir. I know. We don't. I know. I know. I understand. As I said at the beginning, keep what works and bin the rest. All right. It's going to help you. Watch. It's just the beginning of the process. All right.
Some of us get triggered because somebody says a word that we don't like. What if I said ban job? <laughs> See, you didn't get triggered by fuck, you got triggered by something else, right? It's the Indian version. <laughs> My point is that if you didn't understand it, you didn't respond. Hello? This is a really high level, high awareness breakthrough conversation. I say bancho, it doesn't mean anything in your vocabulary, so you don't respond, you smile and go, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's the references in your brain that trigger your responses. The word has no power until you give it power. The power is not in the words. Everything exists in your interpretation of life. Write this down. Everything exists in your interpretation of life. Some people get pissed off at fuck and banjo. I got called a packy when I was a kid. But I didn't know what it meant. So I didn't respond. <laughs> Me and my brother were the two first Indian kids to go to a white school in central London. Church school. And they were calling us Paki. And I went home and I said to my mum and dad, I said, they were calling us Paki. What does that mean? We were like, all right. Big up to the Pakis, man. <laughs> <laughs> they must be boosting me up. They must know I'm a Don, right? I'm like, all right, thank you. Thank you, guys. My dad said, don't worry, they just don't understand you yet. He didn't say that's racist, they're nasty, smack on one when you get back to school. He didn't say any of that. So they just don't understand you yet. So off I went back to school, age 11. Young kid, innocent, bought into my dad's interpretation of the world, went back, packy, packy, went, thank you. <laughs> you don't understand me yet. <laughs> what if life could be that easy? I've got a friend. Some of you know Erkan. Yeah. Got a friend of mine, Turkish. Same situation. When he was growing up in school, they called him a Paki. He understood what a Paki was. But he was Turkish. He couldn't understand why they were calling him Paki instead of Bubble. That was his issue. Don't call me a Paki, I'm not a Paki, I'm a Bubble. Can you see how we get hooked up on words? Making sense? You have the power to diffuse anything you want in a heartbeat if you choose to. Or you can be pissed off for the rest of your life. Or you can be pissed off for the rest of your life. People stab each other because of words. In England we stab each other. In America they shoot each other. All right? In India they piss on you. <laughs> Maybe a bit more gentle out there. <laughs> Are you with me so far? Yes. You determine your experience of life. <coughs> Nobody else. I cannot piss you off until you decide to piss yourself off. Oh, here's a classic example, recent example. Who saw the Chris Rock, Will Smith? Yes. yes. Right? Will Smith. I don't watch TV, I don't listen to the news, so I was disconnected. I learned about this like about a week later. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody showed me and I was like, what the fuck? Will Smith. In my eyes, a legend amongst legends just became an absolute twat in a heartbeat. And told the whole world that it's okay to be an asshole. Because of words. And they weren't even words that were offensive to his wife directly. They were in the context of one of the biggest comedians on the planet whose job it is to take the piss out of people. Mm. See, it wasn't Chris Rock's words that pissed him off. If you watch the video, he laughed when Chris Rock said yeah, the joke. Yeah, He's yeah, laughing, yeah, like, piss it up. His natural response is to get the joke. Right? Now, I don't know what happened in between that and him deciding that it was something else, but those words meant something to someone else, differently to what they meant to him. 
and force a reaction of playing small rather than being big. And sent a message to the world that it's okay to go around smacking people that are doing their job. Wow. Shocked me. Threw me off balance. I've, I've been sharing his videos for years. I've been learning from his videos for years. The guy's a freaking legend. Are you with me? Yeah. Now here, yeah, but here's the thing. Now, has anyone here ever screwed up? Yeah. yeah. So he screwed up. Big deal, right? If he acknowledges the screw up, what, what could have been really powerful if he was present is he would, number one, interrupt himself because it wasn't spur of the moment like this and it just happened. He had to get up. He had to walk around, walk across stage in front of thousands of people, millions of viewers, and still carry out the action. That's some, that's some serious commitment and decision making. Does this making sense? Made a decision and followed through no matter what, right? So he didn't stop all of that. He didn't follow through to the end. Cool. He could have said, shit, that is not who I am. I'm so sorry. I don't know what came over me. He could have done that and repaired the damage immediately. The problem was not that he lost control. All human beings lose control. Make sense? The problem is recognizing it quickly and repairing it as quickly as you can. The quicker you can recognize and repair, the better you become over time. Is this making sense? Right, this time I'm going to give you one of the most powerful, powerful techniques that I've ever learned to make you a much, much more powerful human being. You ready for this? Lean forward. <laughs> lean forward. Your body language has got to be engaged, man. Come on, lean forward. You can do this. Some of you are not committed, are you? <laughs> lean forward. Everyone's got to lean forward for everyone to get the information. Congratulations. There you go. Teamwork makes the dream work. <laughs> forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Press pause. I know, it's too simple, isn't it? Yeah. See, the beautiful thing about life, it is simple. We complicate it. Life is so simple. Press. Pause. Could it be that simple? Tony, could it be that simple? Yeah. Could it? Yeah. Is there anyone that disagrees with the fact that if you press pause before being stupid, Chances are you might avoid being stupid. Yeah. Wow. The weakest people on the planet are reactive to life. The weakest people on the planet are reactive to life. As long as you're in reactive mode, it's thousands of years old, it's embedded in the back of your brain, the reptilian brain. It's reactive. It's fear driven, scared, and defensive, and very small minded. You've got to override this shit. Your reptilian brain will keep you in reptilian mode. You with me? If you want to be a human, evolve. What do we do? Evolve. Yeah. Think higher. Get above yourself. Ever heard of the phrase higher self? <clears throat> Make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Higher consciousness. Pausing allows you to access something else. Do you think in that moment, if Will, Will Smith paused and thought through, hold on, I'm about to walk across stage, thousands of people, I'm about to endorse violence to the whole world when I've spent my whole life doing otherwise, is this going to serve great or good? Do you think he would have followed through? No. Can you see? Practice pausing in everything. <clears throat> Overdo it in the beginning to reap the lifelong benefits later. Make sense? Overdo it. Pause everything. When you're watching EastEnders, pause. <laughs> that needs to be stopped. <laughs> pause. And just watch, play it through in your mind. 
And here's why, this is how manifestation works. Do you get it? It's how manifestation works. You play it through in your mind first, and then you make a decision based on what you just played through. If you pause, you will experience what you want to experience. If you don't pause, you'll experience your past. It's high level stuff. I know. For a Saturday afternoon, pretty deep, right? Yeah. But if you grab a couple of these nuggets and run with them, I promise you, your life will be unrecognizable from this evening. And from a week from now, and a month from now, and a year from now. If you continue practicing these simple, powerful principles. Make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Life-changing stuff. So then what happens? My mum and dad are raised in Africa. They have their own business. They're doing good. And another idiot pops up in town. <laughs> There's always an idiot. Right? Putin's not the first. Another idiot pops up in Uganda. Some of you know the name? Yeah. All right? And he goes, this isn't right. These Indians are taking all the money. I want the money back. Let's kill them all. Not realizing that they were creating the money to keep it. It wasn't coming from nowhere. We're entrepreneurs by nature. <coughs> making sense. We took barren ground, turning something that was really working well for everybody, and suddenly said, I'm going to take it all back, and they ruined their country. <coughs> one person. One person. Uganda was one of the most thriving East African countries. Is that making sense? Smash it to pieces. Now they're paying people to come back giving back their land and their business. But you can't give back a business that you took 50 years ago and ruined. Mm. And so can you please come back and build it up again? <laughs> Life doesn't work like that, does it? It's too late, they've moved on. They've built businesses here instead, or in America, or wherever else they went. Is that making sense? But we're survivors, we're Teflon people. Anyone that immigrates, any immigrant, when you laugh at immigrants, just realize they're a million times higher than you in the, in the vibration frequency ladder. Yes. Making sense? Mm. They've been through so much more than you can imagine going through, right? Mm. My mum and dad arrived here. English was not a language they spoke. They left with very little because they were trying to get out of East Africa in case this thing flared out like a lot of people did. They arrived in England with big hopes and dreams because they were told the pavements were made of gold. They were like ready to do it again here, right? They didn't speak the language. Had no money had no education and were not wanted. Signs in the windows. Do not enter if you are Irish, <coughs> black, uh, Irish, dogs, no dogs allowed, no Irish allowed and no blacks allowed. And if you weren't white, you were black, right? So we were black. Who thinks they were tough conditions to operate in? Did we give a shit? Because we couldn't read anyway, so it's alright. <laughs> I'm just kidding, we could read, but we refused to read the bullshit. Are you with me? There were two types of people in that time. They're the ones that said, I don't speak the language, I haven't got any money, they don't want me. And they stayed there. And then there was another set of people. They said, what can we do? Let's not focus on what we haven't got, what we can't do. Let's focus on what we're committed to. What are we committed to? Success. What do we need to do? Get shitty jobs. That's where we start. And they took the factory job that nobody else wanted, that paid nothing. My mum used to walk two or three miles to work and back every day in the snow, in the rain, in the cold, to save two pence on bus fares. That's called decision, follow through, commitment. Those two pennies over time, led to them affording a business after 10 years of working. They finally did it. 
They exited the rat race. Ten years is what it took. They didn't just work one job. She'd come home, knock on doors, selling Avon products. Dragging me and my brother around, door to door. <laughs> delivering creams and stuff and collecting cash. And We were hustling from a young age, right? We're, we're witnessing what it takes to win from a young age. It's raining, doesn't matter, come in with us, come on. It's cold, doesn't matter, put your hood on, come on, let's go. Making sense? Yeah. Yeah. Knocking on the doors, door slammed in her face. My mum was like, they closed the door on my face. <laughs> so I never saw her do that once. Next door, then the next door, then the next door, and then the next door. That's how life works. It was simple for my mum. Simple. If I keep knocking on that door, somebody's going to buy something. Mm -hmm. Add another two pence to my pot, eventually I'll be able to get a shot. Make sense? Yeah. Overtime came along. Dad grabbed it with both hands. Double shift, no problem. Some people at work get asked to say an extra half an hour and have a moment. What do you mean an extra? That means I'm going to miss the bus and then I've got to do it and the dinner's going to get late and his dinner's going to start. And I can't do an extra half an hour. What do you mean an extra half an hour? Yeah, coronation. Sorry, I forgot coronation. That's the other one, right? <laughs> Sorry, Sharon. <laughs> Are you with me? Yeah. Excuses or results. Life is so simple. You decide up front in advance, and you pay the price up front in advance, and you get the results that you deserve, not want or need, but you deserve. You with me? Life's getting easier, isn't it? Who can already see that you can do your life? way, way better than you've currently been doing it, and within the next year, two years, three years, five years, you can be in a whole different place. Who can already see that? Show me your hand. Is that powerful? Right? It's available to anybody. Yes! Uh, yes! Yes! It's happening! I'm in. Switch it off, Sharon. <laughs> so they did that, right? They worked weekends, they worked weekdays, they worked on days that didn't exist, they didn't care. They did everything that they had to do to get to where they wanted to get to. Here's what the magical part was. By the time I was 10 years old, I'd seen them do all the jobs, all the skivvy stuff, making ends meet, burning candles at both ends and in the middle, seen all of it. 30 plus people living in a four bedroom house in East London for the first four years of my life. My dad had enough money to buy a house after four years. He bought the house across the road. Not rented, he bought it. He had enough money to put a deposit down on the house across the road. Within four years of landing in the country with nothing, not the language, not the education, not the money, nothing, no support, nothing. And he bought a house across the road in four years. How many of you bought a house four years from the day that you started working? Wow. Come on now. And what's your excuse? Because all excuses are equal, right? Watch that stuff. Yeah, but. No, not, there's no yeah, but in it. There's no yeah, but in it. There's a commitment. There's a commitment, a desire, a determination, and follow through, whatever it takes. Walking instead of jumping on the bus is what it took. Can you see that? Whatever it takes. Here's the best part. When they bought the business in the Barbican, we moved to central London, from Forest Gate, to central London. That was a paradigm shift. <laughs> and suddenly we moved into a land where the, the words were different. The words were different. They didn't say fuck. They said fuck. <laughs> Briefcases, bowler hats, pinstripe suits. Talk in the 70s, right? Umbrella. Umbrellas. It was a whole new world. East London, Central London. We had a shop in the barbecue and we lived upstairs. Guess what the most exciting thing is for a 10 year old? 10 years, mum and dad working all the time, not seeing much of them. Suddenly, they're on site. The minute I wake up and go downstairs, mum and dad are there in the shop. Dream come true. Got my parents back. I was raised by uncles, aunts, cousins, grandpa, grandparents. You with me? 
Suddenly I saw my parents arise. I said, all right, here you are. <laughs> Otherwise we'd see them at the end of each day. Right? One thing that they did every single day without fail. At the end of the night, me and my brother would sit on the uh, foot of their bed and we were, we were forced, yes, we were forced, we were forced <laughs> to do our times tables. <laughs> Anyone else had to go through that paper? Yeah. I see all the Indian hands go off, innit? <laughs> Listen, we're numbers people, man. It's drilled into from a young age. Numbers, numbers, numbers. Get, get to groups with the numbers, and you'll do all right. One times one is one. One times two is two. Uh, boring stuff, right, initially? But then you, the, the price that we paid them, we have to work out to 12 times. We have to master and memorize every digit to the 12 times table. But what did that do? It built up nervous connections, neurons in the brain that were so comfortable with numbers that it doesn't, it's not scary to make a few million a week. Wow. Is that making sense? Yeah. Most people are too scared to make an extra zero. <laughs> Add a zero to your current annual income, chances are your brain will not engage in that conversation. If you're making 40,000 a year and you tell your brain, right, we're now going to make 400,000 a year, your brain doesn't sit back down again. Because <laughs> it knows how hard it works for 40,000 a year, right? So like, you're kidding me, I'm not doing that. But when you lift those barriers, when you build better relationships to the conversations that you have in your head, you open up doors for yourself. Is that making sense? Mm -hmm. Everything happens here before it happens anywhere else. Have I said that? Have I said it enough? So if you want a better life, have a better life here first. If you want a better relationship, work it out here first. The problem is never the relationship, it's everything that you do in it. Is that making sense? The next time your partner's late home, don't do what you do. Press pause. Make sense? Don't beat them up the minute they walk through the door <coughs> based on your history. You know what I'm talking about here? And it's in everything, right? Don't say no to the person that's trying to change your life because something didn't work out before. That's ludicrous. You can see how we do it. Don't grab a coat once you know it's poison. See if you can half the intake or swap it for water, ideally, but that's too much to ask. Have it every other time instead of every time. Is that making sense? And then every third time. And at least do something to get off your addiction of crisps and biscuits and all that shit that we do, right? It's just less. I remember when I took sugar out of my tea. Indians and tea without sugar does not work. <laughs> so we've all got diabetes, right? <laughs> oh no, we inherited. No, you didn't. <laughs> you inherited the tea. That's what you did. You inherit the habits that create that, that stuff in the body. Is that making sense? You don't inherit diabetes. All right? Small percent, tiny, minute, 0, 0.00 something percent, yes, maybe. All right? Making sense? So no, and then do whatever you can. Like I said, I'm not saying be a hermit. Have it. Less. Is that cool? Yeah. I love KFC. It's finger licking good. KFC, right? How can you not? But once every two or three months is enough, just to have that mm, done. <laughs> All right? Not every week. Why? Not every week. Making sense? So we've got to do everything we can in our power to just improve the odds of having a better life experience. Is that cool? Enjoy everything. How does it go? Everything in... Yeah. Cool. The unfortunate thing with that statement is nobody knows what moderation is. <laughs> Alright? So you need to know what moderation is, right? Know what the body requires in terms of sugar intake and then act accordingly. Is that making sense? Don't overindulge. Don't overdo it. Don't do you know what I mean? So just pause. That's all it is, a pause. The car I used to do it a lot in the beginning, right? The car would pull over, see the sign, right? KFC or McDonald's. The car would pull over. The steering will just do its own thing. It's like, I'm not even doing this, I'm not doing it. Alright, we're in the car park now. Here we go. Alright? You've got to press pause. I know, right? Stuff's hardwired in. Just press pause, okay. Am I really committed to an early death? Or not? 
and then you might skip it every other time. Is that making sense? Mm. And then you might skip it a bit more, and then you'll skip it even more. I've had McDonald's and I don't have any years. Is that making sense? It took a while to get off that subject. It was all addictions, right? They talk about coke because it's untaxed, but all of this stuff, nobody talks about it because it's taxed. Alcohol, food, sugar foods, all that stuff, right? We have to be self-aware human beings. What do we have to be? Self-aware. So let's talk about money. Money is the roots of all success. That's not what they taught you? What? Where did you learn? Which school did you go to, right? Can you see? It's embedded. Money is the root of what? All success. All contribution. All charitable donations. All of the greatest things that happen in the world. Who wants some? Now we do. <laughs> Nobody wants evil. What kind of bullshit is that? Who sold that story, right? It's the love of money. <coughs> I love money. I love what it's, have, what it's done for me, for my family, for the people around the world that benefit from the decisions I make. I love it. The love of money has not taken anything away from a great life experience, right? When money determines who you are, you might have a problem. Mm. All right? Money doesn't determine who I am. I determine what I do with the money. Make sense? Mm. Or put another way, money makes you more of who you are. Yeah. If you're an asshole, you're just going to be a bigger asshole with more money. Mm. <laughs> that making sense? Yeah. Money makes you more of? So doesn't it make sense to become a better person in advance? <laughs> He thinks that makes a lot of sense. Because if you're an arsehole when you get there, and then you become a bigger arsehole, it's a bit of a pointless exercise, right? <laughs> but if you're awesome by the time you get there, and then it arrives and you become more awesome, that's yeah. got to be a good thing for the world, hasn't it? So work on your awesomeness first, and then let everything else around your life build around your awesomeness. Is that cool? Yeah. When you show up better, life shows up better. Is that cool? When you show up better for yourself, life shows up better for you. Wow. What if it was that easy? Who would take it on to be a better human being if life showed up better for you by a result of you being better? I'll take that deal any day of the week. Cool? We cannot change what happens. We can absolutely change the way we react to it. We cannot change what happens in life. You'll die trying to change that stuff, right? You can't change what happens. You can't change what others do. You can't change what the country does. You can't change what the world does. But you can change the way that you react to it. Here's the difference. People that react, it's knee-jerk reaction. Cool? People that pause, respond. Learn to respond instead of react. And the shift between the two is learning to press pause. Respond instead of react. It's in the language, by the way. React. You're doing predictable previous patterns of behavior. When you react, you're just reacting from what you know, from your past, from your history. You're just doing what you've always done. No growth. Is that making sense? When you respond, it comes from a place of responsibility. Respond. From responsibility, so thought through decision. It's a higher level of thinking. It's a higher level of living. Is that making sense? Learn to respond instead of react. Everybody reacts. It's natural. It's inbuilt for thousands of years. The only way, you can't get rid of reacting, but you can press pause and not follow through on the actions that come with that reaction. Is that making sense? And once you press pause, you open up choices. And when you realize you have more choices than your past, you can create a better future. Is this making sense? Yeah. I'll try and make personal development sound simple so that we can all grab a hold of it and make it work for us. It doesn't need to be complicated, right? People tell you you've got to go to this course, it's going to cost you 100000 to work it out. No, you don't. No, you don't. Just need to be present. You with me? So if money is the root of all success and everything great that happens in your life, and you're now committed to having more abundance in your life, the next question is, what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do? Not think about it. 
Big difference. Not what are you going to think about doing about it. What are you going to actually commit to doing about it? Yes. Oh no, uh, leadership call. <laughs> Quarter past two. Okay, good. <laughs> so, when you work out what you're really committed to for yourself, and you can literally make a shopping list, all right? Write down a list of all of the things that you're committed for yourself in your future. Design your future. Very simple, simple concept. If you design your future, and then every action, measure it against that future. Is the action I'm about to take now in line with what I'm committed to producing for myself in my life? And if the answer is no, however tempting it is, turn away. Press pause, take a different path. Make a different decision. Go down another road. Just making sense. If the action now is not aligned with the outcome you're committed to, don't do it. Most humans waste far too much time on wrong actions. Is it making sense? Decide what you're committed to and align who you are and the actions you take with that outcome and watch miracles literally manifest themselves in your life. You will produce miracles as you show up. What if that was possible? What if it was possible to produce miracles from the minute you wake up to the minute you fall asleep? What if you could bump into people that were looking for you? Accidentally. <laughs> what if you got calls from friends just when you thought about them and they suddenly called you? Who's ever had that, by the way? Anyone had that? Yeah, but you didn't take credit for it, did you? So that, 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 oh, that was a coincidence. Mm. If only you knew. <laughs> you practice more of that, right? What you focus on, what your attention goes on, everything that goes on in here is what you experience. Right? It's how life works. Your focus and attention manifests your reality. The biggest task you will take on in your life is managing this thing here. If you get a grip to grips with this, if you understand how to make this work for you versus it's not rocket science now, is it? Do not do this on autopilot. You steal away the, the gift that you've been given. The gift that makes humans different to every other species on the planet is this, that we get a set. It's not on autopilot. It's not reactive. Although that's maybe how we practice it, all right? Because we weren't taught otherwise when we were youths. We were trained to put it on autopilot <laughs> and reactive. But it's up to us to unhook all of those old learnings and relearn how to not be on autopilot, how to be present, press pause, and choose our future. And our future exists when? Now. Just from back then. When I said it. Are you with me? Yeah. The future is unfolding in the next breath that you're about to take. Make sense? Yeah. Someone's thinking the future's way over there. No, the future is right next to where you are now. It's waiting for you to decide. It's, waiting. it's already asking, did you take a few deep breaths during this training? Chances are you were breathing on autopilot. Right? How many took some conscious breaths? Couple of us, congratulations, give yourself a round of applause. Right. But all of this is conscious practice. Nothing nothing changes. It's all hardwired. It only changes when you have a massive desire and commitment to change it. Alright? So you might need to put it into your diary initially. I used to do all of this. In the beginning, every hour I'd have a little alarm went, went off. Have a stretch, have a glass of water and do some breathing. In the beginning, twenty five years ago, when I was learning this stuff. I was so naive, I was such a blank canvas, I was willing to do whatever I had to do to get out of my shitty state that I'd created in my life, that I was learning and absorbing and applying. And guess what? It all worked. Because so I allowed myself to be naive with it, right? Just practicing. Whatever you've got to do, whatever it takes, set the alarms. People, 
you've got to set an alarm to remind yourself to drink water. Why don't you just drink when you're thirsty? Because if I did, then I wouldn't need to set the alarm, would I, stupid? <laughs> it's doing what you've got to do to support your better self, support your better practices. Does that make sense? Until that becomes normal. Until breathing regularly on purpose becomes the norm. Until drinking water regularly throughout the day becomes your normal. Is this making sense? So until it becomes your normal, you've got to support yourself. Do whatever you've got to do in your environment to help you do that. Now, if you knew how an iPhone worked, you would have switched off the sound, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's a Samsung. It's it? reacting. <laughs> it is Samsung. <laughs> so look, guys and girls, it's, uh, we're going to have a short break. There's teas, there's coffees. If you want to put that poison into your body, you can do that. There's water in the park. <laughs> um, we've got a half an hour break. Back in the room at three, and we'll kick off with leadership. What's this? I thought it's a quarter past. No, that's... I thought it was, but no. Oh, there you go, I've been misinformed. Yeah, I'm saying. It's not the real time. We've got ages left. We've got another 20 minutes of good stuff there. Get your seats again. 20 minutes more coming your way. 20 minutes more. All right, good. So, let me talk a little bit about our DNA for money, all right? First of all, how we learn everything is from our environment. Got it? So when you're born... Your parents input all of their data into you. Is their data real? Only for them. Is this making sense? So your parents are going to download everything they've got into you, and you will think that's the truth. Make sense? But it's only their truth. It's only one version of the truth. One version from about seven or eight billion versions of truth got downloaded into your brain from one of your parents, and then another version from your other parent. Is that making sense? Then what happens next? If you've got siblings along the way, that causes some reactions to your downloaded data. Eventually you have uncles and aunts that maybe pour a little bit more in. Then you'll go to school. Is that making sense? Who teaches you at school? Do they know everything? They'll give you what they know. Is that making sense? They give you their truth. More downloads. Who else teaches you at school? Friends. Friends. And what happens, we're now getting exposed to lots and lots of different data. Is that making sense? But the foundation's already been set. This is where the system breaks down. Are you with me? If the foundations that are set inside of you are that money is the root of all evil, for example, based on your visual and physical experience of life growing up for the first three, four, five years, if what you witness was money is scarce, difficult to come by, it's a struggle, there's never enough, and it's evil, when you know, all of that stuff. If that's your learning, then anything else you're learning is actually misinformation. Because you're just learning from what you already know. You're reconfirming. You're not learning, you're reconfirming. Is that making sense? So what happens when a rich kid bumps into you? You can't identify. So then you judge and put it in another box. And you say things like, it's all right for him. That kind of bullshit comes out of your mouth. Is that making sense? It's all right for him. You justify. It's an excuse. Rather than saying, hold on a second. How come he's got better clothes than I have? What's going on here? We don't, we, don't, we don't maintain that level of curiosity. Is that making sense? We're not in learning mode. We're in reconfirmation mode. And most of us do that for our whole life. There's no learning going on. We're reconfirming. Reconfirming. Re staying safe. Here's another one understands. <laughs> you get me. It's evil, isn't it? It's fucking money shit, right? You get me, man. That's what we do. We go around looking for friends that reconfirm what yeah. we know to make us feel comfortable, comfortable and safe. Yeah. Guys, this is huge. If you get this, you get everything. You get everything in this conversation. We spend our whole lives reconfirming the very little we know instead of learning the infinite wisdom that exists. Think about that. It's all about self-worth, isn't it? See, self-worth is not, it's quite a little strange phrase, self-worth. So self-worth, for most people, comes from others. What a stupid way to do that. The whole point of self-worth is what? Self-worth. We spend our whole life looking for it in others. 
Tell me I'm nice. <laughs> Tell me I'm a good person. <laughs> Tell me you like me. Tell me you love me. Please. I don't, I don't like myself, I don't love myself, I don't trust myself, so I need, I need somebody to tell me so I can feel alright about it. <laughs> and you see, see, if you love yourself, you trust yourself, you know yourself, you don't give a shit what anyone says about anything. It's making sense? It has zero impact. It's only when you don't know who you are, you always doubt everything about yourself. How do you ever know who you are? You decide up front in advance. It's all made up. Everything is made up from about that height. And you can remake it up whenever you want. You can remake up any story you've told yourself, historically, anytime you want, and start living into that future. Most people's story that they play to themselves goes something along the lines of, I'm not good enough. I'm not deserving. I don't know enough, I'm not smart enough, I'm not educated enough, I'm not wealthy enough, I'm not tall enough, I'm too short, I'm the wrong colour, I'm in the wrong postcode, I mean, you know, I, I know the wrong people, whatever, we've got a million and one things that we tell ourselves every day that keep us small. Historical data, trash. Control, or delete. <laughs> Learn to do that, that's another little command. Pause is a great one. Control, delete is another one. Learn to do that. Start getting rid of your mental baggage that keeps you small. You are as powerful as you choose to be. You're as open as you choose to be. You're as free to be around as you choose to be. You can attract whatever kind of conversation into your life that you choose to attract. You can sit, I can sit at any table with anybody and be complete, completely comfortable in my own skin. You can put me next to a president, a prime minister, a CEO. I have zero insecurity complexes about who I am on the planet. So whenever I'm with anybody in any environment, I'm 100% comfortable to communicate with them without any hesitation, any doubt, any no self-assurance needed, no <laughs> confirmations needed. We're good. Is that making sense? Yes. Some people have all that going on, right? Oh, you can't say that in front of him. You can't do that in front of her. No, 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 no. What are they going to think? What are they going to say? Who gives a shit? They're not paying your bills. They're not on your wealth plan. They're not putting money into your bank account. Let them keep their thoughts to themselves. You decide. Who are you? How are you going to show up? And what future are you going to create for yourself? Because nobody else is going to do it for you. Not your husband, not your wife, not your children, and not your parents. All right? They'll add, they'll do their bit, but ultimately the bottom line is only you can manifest your future. That control set, that remote control, is in your hands, not somebody else's. All right? That's another thing we do a lot of, right? We rely, we rely on somebody else to deliver our future for us. And then we start crying. <clears throat> Ooh, should have done it like that, should have been like that, didn't do it like this, why didn't this happen? The only way to do it is take full responsibility and do everything you can that's within your power to do and do it better today than you did yesterday. And do it better tomorrow than you did today. You with me? Who here is ready to openly declare and commit to your future? Wow, love it. Give yourselves a round of applause. Here's the best part. Once you've decided and you have absolute clarity about who you are and where you're heading, there's nothing that can stop you from getting there apart from life. <laughs> Some of you get that after the break. <laughs> <laughs> there is nothing that can stop you from creating the life that you see in here other than life. And it will. That's what life does. That's the beautiful thing about this whole game. Because if it was just as simple as, okay, declare it, take the de make the decision, take the actions, follow through, and that always happens, then life would be boring. 
Mm. We'd all be billionaires, sitting in mansions, and we'd have nothing to do. Is <laughs> that making sense? Yes. So it never happens the way that you thought it would happen. It never happens as quickly as you might think it's going to happen. It never happens the way that you'd like it to happen, right? It then becomes a journey. It's an ongoing interaction with life. You've got to hold the vision true every day, every minute of every day. Remind yourself, remind yourself, remind yourself what you're committed to. Because otherwise you'll start reminding yourself what you're experiencing. What you're experiencing has nothing to do with what you're committed to. They're two separate things. Yeah. Most people live in their experience. Is that making sense? Mm -hmm. We get stuck in our experience. What happens? When we're going through a tough time, we start saying things like, it's tough. Mm -hmm. And when you say it, you're thinking it. When you're thinking it, you're saying it. When you're saying it, you're thinking it. When you're thinking it, you're saying it. You're saying it. And you reconfirm that truth, that it's tough. And then guess what? Your actions are very limited to tough. That's how manifestation works. You have to undo these chains of thinking. Is that making sense? The way to do that is remind yourself always of the outcome. Remind yourself where you're heading. Always, always, always. Even more so when life is not serving you the cards that you want to serve. When life's throwing curveballs. When life is giving you challenges. When life is doing its thing. The, the, the hardest time to remind yourself is then, isn't it? When you're going through shit, it's not easy to reach out and grab your future in that moment. That's when you need to grab it more than ever. Yes. Otherwise you'll drown in the ship. That becomes a reality. Making sense? Yes. This is where you have to trust yourself. You have to trust yourself to know that you can get yourself out of the ship. How can you trust yourself? Because you always have. We just haven't focused on it. You've gone through every challenge life has given to you. And you're still here. You're a miracle maker. You with me? You're already a miracle maker, but you don't relate to yourself that way. The gap between your best self and your current self is all in a conversation with yourself. When you start focusing on the miracles that you've already created, You make that the confirmation. There's not a challenge on the planet that can get the better of you. Anyone that knows me knows that, right? I've been through more shit than most people can even imagine because I'm one of those people. I throw myself into life. I put myself into the whole of life, right? I'm one of those fully engaged, let's do it all kind of people. You with me? When you're a let's do it all kind of people, you're exposed to a lot more shit. Is that making sense? But I'm still a let's do it all kind of person. Because I don't care about the circumstances and the situations and the, 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 what's going on in a certain environment. I'm always committed to something way bigger than myself. Is this making sense? I'm always, I've always got that. That's so anchored inside of me, like who I'm committed to be and what I'm committed to doing in the world is so solidly and securely anchored inside that life doesn't disturb me anymore. It only slows down doesn't stop me. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So then I said, right, there's a challenge, let's resolve that challenge, right, back on to the big picture. Here's a challenge, solve the challenge, back onto the big picture. Versus, here's a challenge, solve the challenge. <sighs> Whew, that was close. Oh, here's another challenge, solve the challenge. Whew, that was close. Survive, 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 survive. Oh, another challenge. Whew, that was close. And you never know more than surviving the challenge. We're masters of surviving already. You're here. You don't need to learn to solve problems. You don't need to learn to solve survival. You've already worked that out. You'll always survive. You've got this spot. Is that making sense? Mm -hmm. Think bigger. Think beyond survival. That's what's going to bring out the better version of you. When you demand a better version of you in the future, that demands growth today. There's no demand on growth. The only person that can create growth in your life experience is your future self. Your current self is not going to demand anything. My default setting, if I'm not focused on something bigger, my default setting is do nothing. I love doing nothing. I could sit there and watch TV all day long. You with me? Who's ever done that? Like Whether it's in holiday times or 
you know, times that are forced upon you where you're not working, where you, yeah, the remote control becomes your best friend, right? It's a default setting. And if you haven't got a compelling future to do something different, guess what? That will suck up your time. Make sense? Nothing good or bad. It's not about judgment. It's about commitment. What are you committed to? Are you committed to just watching TV all day? Or have you got a bigger picture that you can drag yourself out of that average action into a better mode of action? See, once you know how to... It's, it's, it's just about... Who remembers the movie Wizard of Oz? Anyone seen Wizard of Oz? Yeah. The Wizard of Oz was the guy that had all the controls. Remember that? Yeah. What I'm saying here is become your own Wizard of Oz. Some of you don't realize you've got a whole bunch of controls there that you can start using to create your world and instead you're being the Tin Man or the Lion or Dorothy or Scarecrow. <coughs> yeah? You're being your emotions. You're stuck in your thoughts, your feelings and emotions. Yeah? Oh, I haven't got any courage. No courage. You with me? And Tin Man. I don't have a heart. I don't have a heart. I need to find a heart. You've got it all. Stop being all that nonsense. You've got it all. You've got a beautiful heart. You've got tons of courage. You've got everything inside of you. You, you were born with the ingredients to manifest whatever you want to manifest. Focus on the other side of the fence. Get yourself onto the other side of the fence. Get in, get in front of your controls. Learn to press pause, fast forward stuff, rewind stuff, delete stuff, stop stuff. All of that is in your hands when you take responsibility, when you own it. All right? So thank you. Get yourself back in the rooms at 5 to 3. We'll kick off sharp at 3. Have an awesome, awesome little break and mix and mingle. Thank you. Thank you. That was me, I caught it. Oh. Let him do it, let him do it. Oh, Yeah, because we'll do part two then.